Hi, I'm Danny Krantz. Uh, I enlisted in 1991. I'm from Haleville, Alabama. Moved to Carlstead, Minnesota. Brian Krantz, uh, enlisted April of 1992. Lived in Carlstead, Minnesota. So what was an enlistment? How long was it? Two and a half years active duty for me. Two years National Guard. Okay. Mine was four years active. Four years active when you enlisted? Yep. Okay. So when you enlisted, Danny, where did you go? I left out of Birmingham, Alabama on a bu Greyhound bus, went to Fort Jackson, Mississippi, did my basic training, hopped on another Greyhound bus to Fort Gordon, Georgia. And then from there I hopped on a plane, went to Korea. Was let's, there... let's go back, basic okay. training. What was basic training like for you? A pain. It was hot. It was, I, I was there in May for basic in Fort Jackson and it was just sweaty, nasty. Um, gas chamber really didn't bother me much. The range I got yelled at for because um, I used Kentucky windage and the drill sergeants really didn't appreciate that. You're supposed to adjust your sights to you and I didn't really. So you were co-ed, right? You were no, long? No, no it, was it was all women? It was, it was all women and all men on the other side. And if you looked at each other, you got to do, the whole unit did push-ups. Okay. So, so did you also cry under, <laughs> cry, call, crawl under Oh, like, the barbed wire, fire? yeah, we did the obstacle course, we did the repel tower, really good at the repel tower, I like that. That was, okay. that was kind of a fun part of it. Um, the gas chamber, like I said, that one really didn't affect us, it didn't affect me that much. And they did put a tree right in the door, so you, when you run out of Fort Jackson, they're expecting you to run into that tree because you're not looking. I'm pretty sure that was planned. For coming out of the gas chamber? Yeah. <sighs> so it couldn't see you, so. You know, um, the, for hand grenades, I had a big uh, hook on my Kevlar because instead of throwing like this, I went over my head and the cadre really didn't like that, but the cadre's arms were bigger than my waist at the time. I was maybe 102 pounds in basic and I kid you not, the guy's arms was had to be like a 38 arm. Huh. And I was like, he shoved you down and you were moving. So did you have the pineapple grenade or the baseball? Pineapple. Pineapple. Yep. So that was long enough to go, yeah. Yeah, and we got to do the AT4s, the little rocket launchers, and it was just like a, a chalk inside of it. So when it hit the tank, it just made a pretty color. It didn't blow up. Okay. So do you have a ceremony when you got done? Yep. Uh, graduated basic training and went over to Fort Gordon, Georgia, and that's like the end of Kuwait was going on, Desert Storm the old school, mm -hmm. dating myself here. But it was uh, kind of interesting because, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're gonna get shipped out to here, you're gonna get shipped out to here, and none of us really believed it. Well, we got to Korea, we were there for two weeks, and then went to Kuwait. Yep. So, and that was nice enough. There was a gentleman that told me he had been to Korea before, and he goes, wrap your duffel bag around your ankle. And I was like, why am I wrapping my duffel bag around my ankle? And he was like, because the Odyssey will come, they will grab your duffel bag, they will carry it for you, which is nice, but then you gotta pay them to get it back. Mm -hmm. So if it's around your ankle, you don't have to go chase it down and wonder where it's at. So right. that was smart on his part, so that was kind of nice. Nice to have somebody tell you what, yeah. let you know so, what's going on. Someone that's been right. in country before, it's yep. kind of nice. I didn't really see much of Kuwait. They had a five foot hole round, and it was like 13 feet deep and that's where the comm center was at and I was communications so um 13 very, foot very very, it, very claustrophobic was it a ladder to get down there then, yes or concrete yes okay so it was very secure we had a lot of psycho squids around us um navy seals that were our guards there and I was only there for a month and a half in Kuwait in Kuwait and then we got shipped to Korea and then I did my full year in Korea. I left Korea to go to Fort Hood, Texas. I got to Fort Hood, Texas, was there two days and got sent to Somalia. Then you went to Somalia? Yeah. Yep. And that's when Somalia was pretty hot? Yeah, that hot. was 93. 93. That was when uh, my buddy Mike Durant, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure you've heard of Black Hawk Down. Yeah, yeah, he was the one that was taken prisoner. 
um, had a lot of friends that were there that didn't come home. Yeah. So it was. Yeah, it was a bad time. Yeah. yeah. And it, the pullout was kind of like Afghanistan, where they started pulling troops out, not realizing you're taking a lot of the stuff with you, and you're not leaving the troops here enough to be able to handle themselves. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Our chain of command kind of screwed us. So you were in Somalia how long? I was there from August to December of 93. Okay. We left, we left in January because I'm a part of Fort Drum. I left in January and we flew into Spain in March. We got to Egypt and then we stayed in Egypt to almost August. So, so you got to see some of the world, didn't you? Oh yeah. And me and a couple buddies, we decided we wanted to go see a pyramid. There was like four of us. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you got to take your gear with you. We won't secure it here. So we put our whole <laughs> duffel bags on our back, M16s, full nine yards, rucks, everything. Carried it four miles to go touch a pyramid. Why? Because we wanted to. Yeah. We did get yelled at. There was a couple gentlemen that didn't like it because there it's Islam. So the whole hijab for females, they didn't like it. Our hair was showing because we just had, you know, the BDU caps on. And yeah. I grabbed the stock of my M16 and I said, no, I'm good, not putting it on. And this says, I don't have to. And my so, friend goes, we could do it. We're in their country. I goes, I don't tell them to take it off when they come to my country. They shouldn't tell me to put it on in theirs. <laughs> so I was kind of, Kind of a little ridiculous on that part. So what was your rank when you came, got out? I went back to E4. You went back, you were where? E5? I was E5. Okay. That lasted until I decided to move a BMW out of a CQ parking spot. Oh. With a Humvee. Oh. There uh, may have been some adult beverages involved in that. So, Lieutenant Colonel's car was in the parking spot and I moved it and it wasn't a good thing because it went down a hill into a pond. On purpose? At the time, yes. <laughs> one of my smartest things, no. <laughs> so. No one of your brighter moments? Is that what you say? No. And then after Somalia, I went to Fort, back to Fort Hood, Texas. We went to Fort Drum, out, out, did our two weeks of out processing or basically debriefing is what you would consider mustard it. out or no nope, it was just just a debriefing to get everything out of Somalia and then all your gear back to your unit and we got to the unit and there was this gentleman Tim the armor never met the guy he comes to the airport they're all standing there for my unit to pick me up he grabs my m16 and I grabbed it out of his hands because I was like that's mine and he was like you're here now you can it's okay, I'm the armor, it's my, I'll take care of it. And I, was like, and I was looking at, you know, the lieutenant colonel that, of the unit 49 trans that I was going into. And she's like, it's okay. So. Yeah. But it was kind of interesting because as soon as I got back, of course, I've been gone over a year. You have to qualify with weapons, PT score, all that stuff. Well, when I went to qualify with the weapon, you have a zeroing range and it's like a big bunch of tables you know and as soon as the first round went off I went underneath the table to shoot they had to clear the complete range out <laughs> mainly because one you just come back from combat the first thing you're gonna do is take cover and so the head the cadre at the range was blowing a gasket why do you take someone that just came out of combat into a range so it was that was on the chain of command. So uh, I got back to the unit and they're like, nope, you're on leave, go home. Like, yep. Okay. So it was kind of nice because Fort Hood, Texas, three day passes, I could drive to Alabama to go see the family. So it was kind of nice. Were you married yet? Nope. I met him at a bar. <laughs> he, was in... a, he was a bouncer in Fort Hood and Cody's bar. And I met him and one of my friends, he was kind of a dare. Yeah, she asked me what I was looking at, and I pointed to him, and she goes, well, go talk to him. I was like, I don't know what to say. 
And she's like, I dare you. I was like, yeah, yeah. Then the other friend goes, double dog dare you. Well, you got to do it then. So I went up to him and I asked him how many people followed him home at night. Call him on? How many people would follow him home at night? And he looked down at me like, what are you talking about? I goes, well, would you call the cops if I did? He goes, I live in the barracks. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So I'll wait until you get off work and then we'll go out for breakfast. So that was kind of cool. And then she's 30 years later and we're still at it. And here you are. Yep. 30 years. Congratulations. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> so we've got three girls, two in the service. We got Krista, she's a captain. She just took, she's getting her chain of command in September. So she could have her own unit. We've got uh, an MP, Candace, our youngest. She's a lieutenant. So. Cool. Yeah. So, so catches us pretty much yeah. up to date. Okay. So Brian, pretty uneventful. <laughs> pretty what? Basic? Pretty un uneventful. Where'd okay. You go basic. Uh, basic in Fort Leonard Wood, AIT in Fort Leonard Wood. Basically took the AIT uh, or basic training eight weeks and then we just marched a couple of blocks down the street to AIT and we had about 13 weeks of training there for our AIT. So, kind of barracks do you stay in? Uh, kind of a, it was the newer style ones at the time I suppose. I think it was... Two story wood? No it wasn't wood. It was, it was brick. Uh, I think there was eight, eight guys in, in, in every room. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I think the AIT one was pretty much similar to that too, if I remember right. Like I said, the buildings all looked the same. When our daughters both went through uh, basic, I think the, they're same in the place? same dang buildings. Well, some of them were still there. I think there were some newer ones updated by that, but I think some of the same ones were still there. The units had changed over 20 some years, I think. But uh, I didn't ask Danny, but how, were the, how was the food? Oh, I, didn't, service. <laughs> I didn't mind it, but I was a big boy, so I I was kind of kept on a pitch count. They watched me, and you never wanted to eat much when you're a big boy that got tape tested, you know. <laughs> Basic and AIT wasn't too bad. Kuwait, it was T-Rats tolerable. T-what? T-Rats. It was the, the big canned, canned food. Um, most of Somalia was MREs. We were we had a hard time in Somalia getting supplies, <clears throat> so it was not really the greatest. I lost a, a lot of weight. We did get in trouble because me and Terry Salcedo, one of the other females, we would go up on top of the building to get sun, and we couldn't figure out why the choppers kept coming over because it wasn't their normal route. We figured it out. Huh. So, so Brian. Tell, tell us a little bit about basic. Well, it was, I guess it was normal average basic training, you know. We a lot of marching. went through marching and, Yeah, but you're you shooting know. and you're definitely the hand grenades would weigh. Yeah, I was, I was expert hand grenade. I, I, I was coming pretty decent to me. Shooting, I've grown up shooting my whole life, so, yeah, that was fine. Come on, know. expert then? Ah, uh, I wasn't an expert. We had... A rash of pink eye that come through <laughs> at the time, and I got pink eye right at weapons qual day, and they said if you don't pass, you're going to be recycled. Well, I give it my best, and I still got a sharpshooter, which isn't isn't yeah. too bad either, nope. you know. And uh, I guess I got the expert and the, the hand grenades. So <laughs> yeah, but you used to throw th a shot foot. So yeah, that's that was that was a little bit of background to help me, I guess. So yeah. No, we, we did good there, so. So, same thing, basic ceremony? Yeah, 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 we went through basic, and like I said, I just marched my bags about three or four blocks down the street to the Alpha 50th Trans Battalion in Fort Hood. We got our bags, and our AIT there for a mechanic was almost as strict as basic training. We never got out, uh, maybe, we had 13 weeks of it, maybe after about week 10 they started letting us have a few more phone privileges, but. Other than that, it was pretty strict. Uh, we we marched just about to every every module, what they call different training area. Three or four miles, we'd walk to go train and all that, you know, mm -hmm. and learn different things about all the different vehicles we worked on and things. But sure, but yeah. 
not nothing too and intense, see, was, I guess. That was different with our AIT because our AIT was more like college. It was like you have to show up at this place at this time to do this. Fall out. And you had march to it, or we had march to it. We we walked and did the classes. If you passed the class, you went on to the next module. Was it all and, women then? No, no. It was it was, it was male, male male female at yeah. AIT. So. Yeah, AIT was mixed. Too. That that we did have females. And oh, did it? Males in our AIT. Yeah. Okay. So. But with our girls, basic training was mixed. Yeah. They had males and females for them. Okay. That's what's changed in the last. So that's there's years. A, that's a, that's a big difference from the time periods of went between Vietnam, Desert Storm, to our girls now. You know, it's it's that's a big change and. I don't remember being able to hold up a card and tell the drill sergeant to stop yelling at me. That would have been nice. I could have used that card. <laughs> they do that now? They do that now. Really? Yep. Wow. <laughs> and um, they, um, we called it shakedown. I don't know what uh, the Vietnam era called it. They called it shark attack for our girls. It was a first couple hours of when you first show up with your bags and stuff and to get in line and get your instructions the drill sergeants are in your face just throwing things and if you didn't grab the right stuff and stuff it was a total disaster when the girls went through it was a little bit easier they did scream yell and get them in line but now i don't even think they can do that <laughs> which is interesting mm. so AIT, you, you what kind of what kind of vehicles do you work on? uh five ton humvee deuce what they call the Cuck V, the uh, the Chevy Blazers and the uh, three-quarter ton Chevy pickups uh, that had the 6.2 diesels in them. You know, everything was pretty much diesel engine that we'd worked on there, you know. Anything with a wheel, pretty much, you know, is what we worked on, so. Oh, cool. So uh, that was, for, what, four weeks? Thirteen Six, weeks. Thirteen weeks. Yeah, Mom like I said, it was, it was, like I said, almost as intense as basic training with this, this restrictions they put on you and, you know, the UN inspections and they worked a snot out and PT like that and, you know, they would give you some push-ups if, you know, the rooms wasn't straight or people weren't doing what they should. They, they treated you like basic training. They didn't give you any passes. Oh, yeah. Hardly you, at all. You didn't have no weekends uh, off? About after 10 weeks, maybe we did. Like I said, the last three weeks, they give us a little little freedom, but it took us a long, long time to gain it. You go to St. Louis or Ozarks no, or anything no, like that? we, I think we got the one three-day pass, and we just went into, uh, what the heck is the town right outside of Leonard Wood there? Yeah, I can't I remember. I can't even remember. It was so dang long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I know we, we went in there to eat lunch with the kids right after they graduated, but yeah, I, I want to think it's Lebanon, Missouri. I, 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 think, I think it's close to that. Yeah, yeah, or that's one of the neighboring towns, so yeah, yeah. it was right there. So, but yeah, I thought Missouri was some good country, you know. Yep. I, it was a little hot. It was, it would rain. A little muggy. It would rain like cats and dogs, and then... You know, 20 minutes later, the sun would be so hot it'd dry you off, and you forgot it rained. You know, but that was, I guess that was the, you know, that Missouri weather. You know, so it was a little different than what I grew up with, but a guy adapted pretty well. You know. So after AIT, I uh, got sent to Fort Hood, Texas, and that's where I pretty much did my enlistment. Uh, First guy. I started in in Third Corps, <clears throat> Headquarters Command, Third Corps. That was where I did the majority of my my time and then if they were downsizing the third corps after uh, Desert Storm I think they were a little overstaffed so they started to take the short timers everybody under a year they shifted them to different units and most of them went to different first cavalry units that's where I I finished my time in first cavalry so okay. and I was doing the same thing light wheel vehicle mechanics on Humvees and five ton induces and things yeah, like that so I met you when you were changing over yeah, into we were, yeah yeah the switching it so yeah okay. so so you spent most of your time in the state all your time yeah, in the state yeah, yeah yeah I did 45 days of desert training at uh, Fort Irwin and that where uh, Fort Irwin National Training Center okay. you know that was about uh, that was about the most I uh, 
duty, I guess I'd say I had, you know, uh, it was a lot of rail loading the trucks and Humvees and things off of the cars, on and off the cars, loading them up, chaining them down, and then on the way back, he did the same thing. So, so what did you have for barracks in uh, Fort Hood? It was like a college dorm. Oh, yeah. You had nice. uh, every floor had four rooms, and you had a roommate in each room there. So, just one roommate? Yeah, just okay. one roommate. So, because when I was there, it was like four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you got your, your, sh yeah, there was one bathroom in that every room, so you shared a bathroom with, yeah. and, and a mini sauces. fridge with uh, your, your roommate, you know, and sometimes you had a roommate that was there, and sometimes you didn't, you know, I mean, sure. sometimes you only, you know, the, your room was open, you know, people come and gone quite a bit, you know, whether they were shipped out somewhere else or, they moved out there, they got done, you know, so. So what was the best part of military service for you? Oh, I guess there wasn't a real bad part of it, you know. I, I enjoyed my time there, you know. I learned a lot about a lot of different things, you know. So Danny, what, what did uh, your parents think of you being in the service? Well, my dad was in Vietnam, and he, I have two older brothers and me, and I think he was hoping one of the boys was going to go, not the girl. Um, he did have a lot of issues because in Somalia we were part of the United Nations. So they kept saying on TV there is no U.S. military in Somalia anymore. And then he would send our congressman in Alabama pictures of me still over there going, uh, excuse me, um, my daughter's still there. So how can you tell me that? And I kept trying to explain to him I was part of the U.N. That's why we had the blue uh, baseball caps that we got to wear and the blue. Oh, well, you we were part of the UN, yeah. We were considered part blue. of the UN. Yeah. And I thought going into Camo, I'd be sitting at a desk, patching stuff through. It was going to be nice. I didn't know there was a tactical side where you set up satellite dishes mm -hmm. out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and call in air support. So that was that was definitely different. Were they run on generator then? or? Yes. Yeah. And that was kind of funny because we had, in Minnesota, there's ice storms. And the National Guard came in and they bought, brought in a 50K generator to help get this, the town up and running. And the National Guard guys were having a hard time getting it running. And I told him, oh, just let me go over there. Just let me go over there. I get it up and running for him. Just let me go over there. He was looking at me. He was like, fine. So I went over there and got it up and running. They looked really good to their command because they were able to get everything going. And they're like, how do you know this? And I was like, don't worry about it. Just take the the praise and go with it. And I went back over to the house, so I had power, so I was happy. <laughs> so, what did your parents think, Brian? You going to oh, They're pretty proud. Your dad loved it. Yeah, my dad always wanted me to be in the, in the army. Yeah. yeah. He just recently passed. Yeah, yeah sorry to hear that. He, he did like it because he could talk to you and you could understand. And it was kind of awesome when our girls went in because there was a bond with his dad and them because he could say things that civilians wouldn't understand and they would pick right. up on it right away and they'd all kind of giggle. So it, it was it was awesome. Sorry guys, my battery is about to run out it looks oh, like. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I just want to say yeah. that Thank you for doing this interview. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you for your service. And I might add too, we we're at Ballard's Resort on a all expense <laughs> paid fishing trip. So very nice. It's a very good yeah. time to get some interviews. Oh, yeah. We, 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 we appreciate the Middle River Outdoors. It's, yeah. Thank you nice. guys. Yep.